Hi folks, welcome again. Today we are going to make a linear feedback shift resistor counter, also known as LFSR, and implement it on basis 3 board. Uh, those of you who are not familiar with LFSR, uh, here's a small description about it. In computing, LFSR is a shift register whose input bit is a linear function of its previous state. Um, the applications of LFSRs include generating pseudo-random numbers, pseudo-noise sequences, fast digital counters, whitening sequences. Um, here's a schematic of it, how a 4-bit LFSR counter would look like uh, using exclusive NOR gate, which is right here. Before I tell you how it creates this random uh, or generate this pseudo-random number, uh, let's look at the properties of exclusive NOR gate. When the inputs A and B are zero, the output is one. And similarly, when uh, inputs one, inputs A and B are one, the output is one. In other words, when the inputs are same, the output is one. When the inputs are not same, the output is zero. So if you look at it, in this project, what we are going to do, we are going to generate a four bit counter. So when every clock pulse arrives, the counter will go up by one. So it will start from zero and go to one, two, three, and so on, goes all the way to 15 and then restart at zero back again. So it will roll over. Once the first clock arrives, the binary sequence, which is zero, which then creates, you know, which is equivalent to hex zero. Uh, the next, what would be the next uh, LFSR counter? Well, we look at Q naught and Q two here, and that is zero, zero. So zero, zero gives you an output of one which means your least significant bit is going to be one and all these shifts are all these bits right here they're going to shift to the left this is going to be here this is going to move here this bit is going to move over here we then look at uh, q naught and q2 again and we apply exclusive nor gate zero one gives you zero so the most least significant bit is going to be zero and then the rest of the bits are going to move to the left by a bit this moves here uh, similarly, this moves over here and this uh, zero moves over here and uh, Maybe we can do one more. So now Q naught and Q2 are zero 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 same inputs output is going to be one And these bits are going to shift to the left this bit goes here This bit goes here and this bit goes over here and similarly this would make a code of uh, so this would make a code of five in hex and similarly the the code goes on uh, the the task we have here is to using the clock, create a counter, and generate an LFSR counter. So uh, when the first clock arrives, it will display 0000 on the LEDs on the base of three board. When the second clock pulse arrive, it will, uh, the rightmost LED will light up and the three will be zero uh, and so on. Okay, so let's get rolling. I hope you understand what we're doing here. We basically need three modules here. The first one is going to be a four bit counter. The second bit is going to be we need to have a slow clock because basis three board has a frequency of 100 megahertz. And the third one would be the uh, would be a basically LFSR counter setting the bits for the LEDs, uh, which would also act as our top module. So let's get rolling. Remember, our basis three board has a frequency of 100 megahertz, and because we want the LFSR counter. Uh, you know moves to one state to another every second that would mean we are looking at the frequency of one hertz meaning every second the output will change and therefore we need to generate a slow clock which we can do using the counter there is a separate uh, tutorial uh, that i created uh, and i'll leave a link on the screen where you could go and you know get more details about it but we are basically looking at we're going to generate a counter which will go up to 50 million. So it'll start from zero and go to 50 million and then goes back again and then start over all over again. So for half of the time, your clock will be zero and then for half of the time, the clock will be high. Uh, this makes one second. So it's off for one second and then it's going to be on for one second. Um, how did I get that number? I don't want to get into detail of it because this is beyond the scope of this uh, tutorial but there's another tutorial in which I define how can you get the clock to work at one Hertz frequency so here is my code for the slow clock where basically this is the input uh, clock of the FPGA board right here and this is going to be uh, the output clock which is going to be one 
Herd's Clock. Okay. I'm going to use uh, a counter here and the counter uh, needs to go up to a value of 50 million. So therefore we need at least 25 uh, bits. So this uh, will go up, uh, up to 50 million and beyond. We just need to go to 50 million. Um, uh, I'm also declaring my output of the clock as a register and then I have this always add we're looking at the positive edge of the input clock of the basis 3 board uh, followed by begin every time the positive edge of the clock arrives uh, counter goes up by one uh, and then when the counter reaches the value of 50 million or when counter reaches the value of 50 million notice 50 million going from here this amount of time is one second okay so when it reaches 50 million count is zero okay count resets itself to zero yeah, once it reaches 50 it reaches uh, it reset itself to a zero that's what it is and then clock is basically whatever if, if it was zero it goes to one if it was one it goes to zero okay um this is your output clock uh and then because you have two begin you have followed by two ends and then the end module so this is your slow clock i'm going to save it right here Okay, and then our next step would be to create a 4-bit counter. For a 4-bit counter, we actually need three and uh, uh, three of the ports, which uh, two of them are going to be input, which will be clock and clear, uh, and then this will be Q. Uh, okay, all right, let's get rolling here. The start of our port identification input is clock uh, and clear, and the output is going to be, and I'm going to uh, declare it as a register. Uh, and because it's a 4-bit counter, so I have to declare it as an array also. Um, and I'll just say this is Q right here. And then I'm going to use the always add command. And because we are looking at positive edge of the clock or uh, positive edge of the player. Okay. Uh, followed by begin if player then basically this is sort of like a reset and Q gets full bar B zero 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 else the count goes up by one and then I'm gonna say end here and that's pretty much my code for uh, make sure you have a semicolon here and that's pretty much my code for a four bit counter uh, and I will go ahead and save this file right here. As I was trying to save this file, it gave me this error on line 33. And I noticed I have this. Um, compliment sign there, which I just deleted and I'm going to save it again. Uh, and looks like everything looks OK. So I'm now going to work on the top module which I basically um, so I am now going to work on the top module and I just created another source file which I named it as LFSR counter uh, we're basically looking at the input which is going to be clock here uh, clear and reset uh, the output is going to be the four LEDs and I'll declare them as registers uh, and say those are LFSR underscore out. Um, so I got my inputs and outputs already defined. Uh, the wires going into the counter module, uh, I need to declare them as wire. Uh, those are Q okay, from the module that we just created, the 4-bit counter. And also the, uh, the slow clock that's coming out of the uh, slow clock module. 
I also need to declare it as a wire, um, which will be C L K underscore L. Uh, it's about time that I should instantiate the two modules uh, we created earlier. One for the counter and one for the slow clock. Let's start with the slow clock. Uh, just make sure that your uh, name matches exactly with your source file name. One hertz, uh, identifier name, say U6 or whatever it could be anything. Input is clock. Uh, the output is clock out here uh, and then for the 4 bit counter in identifier name let's say u7 uh, and then the clock out is the is basically the input here uh, and then clear is the input and the Q which is the output Remember this is a slow clock that is going into the 4-bit counter. Now comes the coding for the LFSR. So again we are looking at the positive edge of the clock. Uh, and this is make sure this is the slow clock you're looking at or positive edge reset. Okay. Followed by begin. If reset. Um, and LFSR um, let's move, let's move the, basically it's resetting uh, so this will be B00 uh, else and we can use case Q and it's gonna start off by 0 but so if the counter is 0 uh, which means display zero okay uh, so LFSR that's zero we'll just follow that table that we created uh, and for bar B LFSR and when the second clock comes in, second positive edge of the clock comes in, it goes to 0, 0, 0, 1. So, 0, 0, 0, 1. And the, actually, this needs to be 1. The next clock comes in, the counter goes up by 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. And the output is the output is then zero zero one zero 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 one zero. So go ahead and uh, and follow table LFSR table read the code. Uh, so I just finished my code right here uh, for all the combinations. Let's look at the last one when the counter goes to 15, which makes a code of double one, double one. Uh, and that is when the code should be double zero, double zero. Okay, so I got double zero, double zero. Um, if, you choose, if you choose, you can set the default, uh, you know, logic for your output to zero. And then followed by and here uh, is my end case uh, and uh, and then the end module which should be at the bottom and go ahead and save your file as you save your file you should notice that you should have your top module right here which I named as LFSR counter and under the counter you should see the two files that you instantiated uh, right over here one is the slow clock one hertz clock and the other one is the four bit counter 
uh, please make sure that these names are exactly matching with the one you have over here otherwise it's gonna throw you in error now it's about time that we should uh, work on our constraint file I already went ahead and copied the stuff that I need from the, the constraint file basically you need a clock which is right here so make sure you have your input clock um, spelled as you have spelled over here it should match exactly um, our reset switch uh, and the clear switch right here and then we need four LEDs which is the linear feedback shift resistor out 0 1 2 and 3 okay so everything is covered let's um, select your top module and then click implementation click yes here and you might have to wait for a minute or so to get this process done all right oops it didn't go well uh, there's an error uh, it is LFSR counter LFSR is not declared okay LFSR is not declared oh this is this should be LFSR out okay so let's go out. Um, let's go ahead and see and uh, let's run the implementation awesome perfect the implementation is complete uh, now we are going to generate the bitstream file so let's click here uh, and then wait for another few seconds once the bitstream file is uh, generated you'll see this dialog box click on open hardware click ok uh, you then go to open target this is something we have done so many times in the other lectures and tutorials so you should be familiar with it uh, select your board here click finish and the last step is to program the device uh, it should aut automatically pull your most current counter bit uh, bit file click program uh, you should be able to see the implementation of your design on the basis 3 board so let's find out what's what's up So, alright folks, this is the implementation of the design that we just created. Uh, linear feedback shift resistor and notice on the LEDs, LED is changing every one second and that's how we set up our code. Started off at 0 and then went to 001 and then 010. You should be able to look at these LEDs and the table that we uh, saw earlier in the tutorial and try to match uh, the output with the outputs in the truck table. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. You can add more to it if you like. You can display these uh, output on seven segment, make it a little more advanced. Uh, keep watching the channel and subscribe to the channel. Uh, please provide me with the feedback. It gives me a lot of motivation. Enjoy your day. Thank you for watching. Bye.